Hi there. Hope you have a fantastic day today. This lesson I will teach you inverse functions. Of course, there's a PDF file versions on the description below for you to download so you can work with me. Otherwise, let's go straight into it. So let's say we have a functions f of x is equal to x squared. So let me write this down. So let's say we have f of x is equal to x squared. So the graph will be like this. So there you go. So let me just label this is x, this is y. So this functions is many to one functions because let's say if we have x is equal to negative 2. So f of negative 2 will give me negative 2 squared. So that is equal to 4. So if f of 2, so that becomes 2 squared. So that also is equal to 4. So we have two inputs and one output. Okay. So it's something like that. I can also interpret like this. So we have a function here. So let's say we have f of x, the function here. So x is equal to negative 2 go in. So the output is 4. And if we have x is equal to 2, go inside the functions. And we also have 4. So we can just write that. So we have two inputs and one output. So that's why we call many to one functions. So this means that the functions cannot be inverse because of many to one functions. Otherwise, you can use horizontal test. So with horizontal line, so if I draw a line across horizontally, so it cut the line twice. So therefore, we cannot have inverse functions, okay? However, if we change the domain, so let's say we have f of x is equal to x squared. So let's say the domain is x is greater or equal to zero. So this means that the functions only exist from zero onward. So the graph will be like this. So now the graph will be restrict to only positive x values. So this is y, this is x. So now the functions becomes one to one functions. So we have one input, one output. So you can see only cut the, the function once. So therefore, we can find the inverse functions, okay, for this. So to find the inverse functions, remember, we follow two steps. Step number one, we have to interchange between x and y. And step number two, we need to make y as a subject. So that will give me the inverse functions. So let me write this down. So first of all, f of x is equal to x squared. So now we interchange between x and y. So remember, f of x is just like y, okay? So now we just replace x and y. So x is equal to y squared. Now to make y as a subject, which is square root both sides, okay? So that will become plus or minus. So every time we square root something, we have to put a plus or a minus, okay? So that gives you y. So this means that y is equal to negative square root of x or y is equal to square root of x. There you go. So we have two answers. Therefore, we need to pick the correct one. Now to pick the correct answer for the inverse, we need to focus on the domain okay, of the functions. Now for an inverse functions, Let so me. the domain of a functions is the range of the inverse functions. And the range of the functions is the domain of the inverse function. So this means that we can see the range of the inverse is here. So that means is from 0 to infinity or y is greater than 0 if you like. So therefore the inverse functions must be positive because from 0 onward. Okay. So therefore the correct answer is this one here. So keep that in mind. So therefore the inverse functions 
is equal to square root of x. So there you go. Now to find the domain of the inverse functions, as you can clearly see here, okay, the y values is always positive because square root of x, okay? Otherwise, you can see the range of this function here, y always positive. So therefore, the domain of the inverse function is always positive. Keep that in mind. So let me write this down. So the domain of the inverse function is also from 0 to infinity. And don't forget the rectangle bracket is inclusive, okay, including 0. And the normal bracket, that means it's excluding, okay, it's not including. Just remember that for me. Let's get the inverse functions, okay? Now, to sketch the inverse, let me just quickly sketch y equal x first, okay? This is y is equal to x. Now, remember the inverse functions is the functions that reflecting about the line y equal x. So, to sketch the inverse functions, so 0, 0, reflecting still 0, 0. And at this point, the inverse and the functions are equal, okay? Now to get the inverse functions, so square root of x is like this. There you go. So this is f inverse of x. And this is f of x. So there you go. Now, otherwise, we can also focus on this, just get the square root of x. And it's quite handy if you remember the trick. So if you have y equal x squared, your graph will be like this. But then if x equal square of y, your graph will be like this. So therefore, if I square root both sides of this, that's where I get, okay? Plus or minus square root of x. So this is negative square root of x and this is positive square root of x so keep that in mind for me okay this can be handy so let's change the domain of the functions okay let's change the domain to less than zero so this means that the graph will be like this so this is when x is less than or equal to zero right now to find the inverse of this of course so we already done up to here. Let me clear all of these as well. So this times the domain of the function is less than or equal to zero. So therefore, the range of the inverse functions must be less than zero. Let me just write this down. So the range of the inverse, remember, is equal to the domain of the functions. So the domain of the function is this. So therefore, the range is y less than or equal to zero. But what I'm going to write is I write this, okay, from negative infinity to zero, but including zero. So that means we have to have a rectangular brackets and this is normal brackets. So there you go, from negative infinity all the way to zero and including zero. Then therefore, we need to pick the correct answer. So therefore, we want the y value, the inverse functions, okay, always negative. So therefore, we need to pick this one. So therefore, the domain for this, so the inverse function will become this. Okay, so x inverse is equal to negative. So there you go. So this is the inverse functions. So let's sketch these inverse functions, okay? Now to sketch this, so let me just quickly draw y equal x first. So 0, 0 is the same. So let's say this point here, negative 1, 1. So the reflecting become 1, negative 1. Okay, keep that in mind. And that's it. And then the graph, it just go like this. So this is f inverse of x. And this is f of x. There you go. Now to find the domain of the inverse functions, so you can see the domain of the inverse function is all the way, all the positive x values. Can you see that? It just keep going this way. So therefore, the so the domain of the inverse functions is from zero to all the way to positive infinity. So you can just write infinity if you like, and including zero. Okay. So there you go. 
please pause the video and try this one yourself. Hi, I'm back. How do you go? So let me go through it with you, okay? Before I do that, please do not forget to give me a thumb up and subscribe if you haven't done so, so you can help me to grow my channel. So let's get into it. Right, to find the inverse of this, remember step number one, we interchange between X and Y first, and then we make Y as a subject, okay? So let me just write the function down first. So F of X is equal to X squared minus one. And we need to pay attention on this domain, okay? It's quite important. So first of all, we just interchange between X and Y first. And Fx is just like Y, okay? So we just interchange that. So that become X and this, the X become Y. So Y squared minus one. So to solve for Y, I move the one on the other side. So negative move on that side becomes positive. So that becomes X plus one and is equal to y squared. Then I square root both sides. So square root both sides. So we get plus or minus x plus one square root of that. And this is y. So therefore the inverse functions, okay, it can be y is equal to a negative x plus one or y is equal to positive x plus one. Then we need to pick the correct one. So the correct one is we need to focus on the, the domain here. So the domain of this is the range of the inverse, okay? So pay attention on this. So the range of the inverse is from negative infinity all the way to zero, including zero, okay? So because y is less than or equal to zero, that is the domain for the inverse functions. So this means that we need to pick the negative answer because we want less than zero. So therefore, this is the inverse functions. So let me just write this down. So therefore, f inverse of x is equal to negative x plus one, square root of that, all because of this, because we want less than or equal to zero. That's why we need to pick the negative one. So that's part one done. So part B. So let me draw the axis first. So this is Y and this is X. So let me just quickly draw Y equal X first. Now to skip the functions. So we know that F of X is equal to X squared minus one and x must be less than or equal to zero. Now to get the um, functions, so we know that it's a parabola shift down one unit, but we only want less than or equal to zero. So only on the left hand side. So just a rough sketch. This is f of x, okay? And now to get the inverse, so let me just label, this is negative one, and the x-intercept is negative one as well, okay? Now to get the inverse functions, so you can look at the um, the function here and we sketch it. Otherwise, we just look at the functions and just the reflections about the line y equal x. So I can just quickly pick it from here. So this point here is zero, negative one, it become negative one, zero, okay? Keep that in mind. So negative one, zero is here. And this point here is the same because the inverse functions is the reflections of the functions about the line y equal x, okay? So, it, and this point, they're always the same. And this point here, the x is set for the functions. So negative one, zero becomes zero, negative one. So it go down here, just the reflections, okay? So therefore, to get this, so this is, F inverse of X. There you go. Now to write down the range and the domain for the inverse functions. So we know that the domain for the functions is X is less than zero. So in another word, from negative infinity to zero. 
So therefore, this is the range of the inverse functions. Okay, this becomes the range of the inverse functions. So that is negative infinity to zero. And to find the range for the inverse functions, you can either look at the graph or you can actually solve for this because you know that we cannot square root a negative number. So inside the third, that is x plus one, it cannot be negative, okay? So in another word, much greater or equal to zero because you cannot square root a negative number. So if I move this on the side, so x must be greater or equal to negative one. So that is your domain of your inverse functions. Or you can also look at your graph. So the inverse graph here, you can see the inverse function is from here onward. So that means from negative one all the way to infinity and including negative one, okay? So the rectangle brackets mean inclusive, okay? Including negative one. So let me just write this down. So the domain of the inverse functions is from negative one to positive infinity. So we just write excluding and including or inclusive if you like. And the range of the inverse functions and you can get the range of the inverse functions from the domain of the functions. So it's already done here. So therefore I just write this down. So negative infinity to zero and zero is inclusive and this one is exclusive. So there you go. I hope you got all of them correct. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.